Welcome to a new test and teardown video. This time it's another oscilloscope. This one is from Germany, Grundy Electronic, and it's called GO15. And uh, yeah, they, I guess they didn't expect this one to go on a, an international market. So everything is of course written in, in German, but it's really, really close to, to English, isn't it? Focus, intensity, niveau. Okay, that is level, right? But I, it's more or less only the oscilloscope that is uh, in German, but that is not going to cause us a lot of problems, is it? Uh, maybe this one. I bet this one is the calibrator for the probe. So it is a one channel oscilloscope, 15 megahertz. It is, uh, the design was released in 1977. So the back of the unit, we see this little type number here with the serial number and all that kind of stuff. I was expecting to find the power consumption, but this is a little bit weird. We see the frequency range and then just 50. So is this the 50 watts or what is that? I think that is a little bit weird. That will be the intensity modulation. And another really funny thing is, I bet if we loosen those three screws, we can rotate this part a little bit and this way rotate the entire CRT and this way get the trace exactly horizontal. This can also be done electronically, but in this one it's a mechanically, uh, yeah, mechanical uh, solution. Let's look a little bit at the internal parts. I did not find any leaked capacitors. Down here in the power supply, everything looks really nice and fine. So far, so good. Well, that will be high voltage oscillator and some rectifier for all that, I bet. And uh, I'm not actually sure about that, if that is really true. And then <laughs> there's a really cool thing. This type of switch here is the trigger feature switch. And look at that. They pull a little circuit board in and out with the different connections on, on it. And then it creates the different connections. And then we got this long arm to handle the mechanical solution for all that. And there is another really cool thing. Look at that. We got half of the circuit board populated in here. And even, oh, let's see if I can get some light. No, that is impossible. What about this lamp, maybe? The thing is, what I wanted to show, here we go. Look at all the holes in the front as well. And then this unpopulated circuit board. And I bet there is also a two channel version. You just change this front and then mount everything here. And since you got channel one mounted and you got everything marked here on the circuit board, you could potentially change this into a two channel oscilloscope if you wanted to. <laughs> that is pretty cool. Of course, it will be a little bit of a DIY project, but it's definitely possible. Easy to access fuse and that is not even melted down or anything like that. So it's so far looking promising. What about? No, they are okay. So you always find those caps and inspect. A little circuit board, probably some trigger and switching. Ooh, look at that. A eh? One of them was replaced. So here is one of the deflection amplifiers. And if we follow the signals, that will be, of course, for from the 
input amplifier and the, all this is deflection amplification up here look at that and the other deflection is here so those resistors and those transistors that's the other i bet this is the time base and this is the um vertical amplifier so that is how it is so far so good and we can see the ic's right there maybe we can see some marking about its age that is a really nice switch for the time base and they're using the same switch down here for input attenuation i think we'll just gonna go and power this up and see if it works see i was right about the rotation alignment here this what is this something nasty dropped into the internal parts here i'm not super happy about that and we've got connectors down here for easy service so we can pull apart everything that is also really good so let's try the first power on and then my idea is i want to i think this is the on off switch it gotta be that right so my idea is i turn on my mains and just give it 10 volts or something like that and then i will see if the yes there is just a half a watt so just let's crank all this up internal trigger uh, is there anything like that and then we'll just slowly crank up the input voltage while we monitor power consumption here at 100 volts it's only using nine watts so everything is perfectly fine oh we got lamp here let's just continue 150 volts 20 watts yeah uh, there's nothing that scares me here so let's just go all the way to 220 i normally test all stuff like this at a little bit under voltage today we run oh look at that yeah we run at 230 but i prefer to use 220 because this is what it was defined uh, designed for nice beam focus is look at that this is also a very very good indication everything is good and fine if you have focus in the middle and i also feel i feel the beam is a little bit tilted so we need to work with that internal trigger this is the position let's try and play with the sweep okay seems to be quite all right and it's really really nice and bright and sharp and all that yeah i will have to work a little bit with this one see now it's already getting better see down here when the beam is going away see this is because some of this balancing stuff here is not connected ah here we go so this switch really wants to be clean I will have to work a little bit with them. Okay, let's try and get some input signal and see if this is really alive. After a little bit of uh, cleaning and fixing, and it's now looking nice and shiny again. I also found a new little... <laughs> and I couldn't find the white one. Oh, this is light gray. But I think this one is uh, pretty good as well. So this is one kilohertz and uh, the time base is also correct. So if I go to one milli second per division and if I move this, it's also very close to one division. So, I mean, it's probably pretty good. So let's try and test. This should be um, 15 megahertz. So this is one megahertz and let's just crank it up. No, this was one kilohertz. Oh my God. Ooh. 
here we go and let's that was 10 kilohertz 100 kilohertz 1 megahertz and now I am in the fastest time base I'll see I'm a little this one is a little bit funny is it maybe a trigger thing so this was one megahertz okay two three oh four five six seven Ooh, now it's really, really critical with the trigger. 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Let's try again. Yeah, okay, here we go. And the level is still the same. Really? So it is a lot faster. Okay, here we go. So that wasn't... Okay, I can't get the trigger. And it's also out of focus and I probably have a little bit more here so this is one uh, point one come on you yeah this one I need to clean as well right but I think it is 19 oh here we go 20 we need to go down to that line from the dotted lines Probably about 20. Let's go back to 10. But the trigger is getting really difficult to work with here at this uh, kind of speed. And also, it's really getting dim now. This is a little funny. But all in all, it is a really nice old skull. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm quite happy about it right now. So. Trigger is good and stable down here, right? So I think I will call this the end of the video and thank you very much for watching. And what you see here is the XY mode is DC coupled and this is why it's looking so nice and uh, fine in the X is DC. At the moment, I think I'm using AC couple for the Y. So let's try and change. Yes, here we go. See, there's a little bit of DC offset. Funny this. Yes, it will affect a little bit the picture quality. So thank you very much for watching. I hope to see you soon again. Bye-bye.